What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sub Podcast, episode 120. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Across from me, virtually, we have Luke Trevisi and Lawrence Loach. What's going on, guys? What's up, man? Chilling, chilling. Well, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yo, I got my hair cut and shit. Feeling nice. Mm-hmm. Feeling Hope good. Yeah, man. Well, you guys, I mean, for not having a haircut for four months, you guys look pretty good, though. Thank you. What do you mean? Oh, oh yeah. I've, I've had some work done in my face, but uh, yeah, for <laughs> awesome. part, yeah, I, I haven't had a haircut for, yeah, four months. Yeah, luckily my mother is a hairdresser, so when I went back home after I heard I had the antibodies, it was the first, yo, I got at the whip and I was like, yo, we going to the shop. I need to, I need a cut. Well, so, good, for you. good for you. I'm glad you, guys. I'm glad you got a haircut, man. That's awesome, man. So, um, we, uh, we got a lot to talk about this week, man. Yes. A lot of stuff happened. I got my, uh, I got my, unfortunately, you were not selected to participate in this uh, $10,000 uh, lottery. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jordan ones. The collectively the biggest L I think that's been given in the sneaker community since its conception. Five yeah. million people tried to enter a raffle and f- uh, probably five million didn't get a winning selection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, they, they started, you know, when you start doing the math and stuff, you know, there was, you know, all there was like 5,000 pairs given out to friends and family, you know, seated pairs. You got, you know, what you have, um, 8,000 other pairs. So it was basically like 13,000 <laughs> pairs in the wild for five million people and you know obviously a lot of those were some of those were bot users i'm sure who you know who jake the coast so it wasn't i'm sure it wasn't five million people right. but i am definitely thinking it was at least two to three million people who probably legitimately like who entered that raffle two million nine hundred and eighty seven thousand l's yeah of course <laughs> man. something to think about we talked about we talked about it last week but i i really feel like uh I feel like this this isn't designed this sneaker was never designed for the average Joe. No. Right. Even every and, and the majority of the average Joes who even won the raffle, the first thing that they're thinking is shit, I just came up on basically ten, fifteen K. Yeah, I saw I just on, paid rent for a year. I saw on the uh on the, the reselling page for uh, on Facebook, mm-hmm. somebody won a pair of the highs. And uh, and then somebody commented, "You're the king now, bro. It's like balls in your court, you know. <laughs> no more else for you, king." <laughs> the one sort of minuscule plug I had toward these, which is my friend who works there, he was like, "Bro, I dude, it's a there's no fucking way any. I'm not even getting them. No one at work's getting them." So we had we had Shotty up next on last week, and he is friends with one of the managers of the Dior store in Soho. Guys, and I'm he sorry, not couldn't. The- not to no, cut you up. There's like there's like a lot of noise. Like someone's like got an alarm going off or that might uh, be me. Let me fix it real quick. Give me one second. Yeah, sure. You got it. Um <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't sure. No, because I, I kept I kept hearing it. I'm like, I don't want the listeners to No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, it's definitely he probably just had like a fan on or something. What was that? Riveting content. <laughs> well you had like a fan on or something i did nailed it see lawrence yeah You're better than me no no i saw good i yeah i just uh, i just heard it now um back Talking to about shoddy dior Side, store yeah. he knew uh what do you call it he knew paris at the dior store and he was like bro it's not happening you know yeah. mm-hmm. nobody's winning these there's like a collective list of like a hundred thousand dollar clients before the raffle came out that were like they were going to be able to get them and uh that changed too so nobody nobody's getting them. yeah well we talked about we talked about this in the last episode where it just you obviously it's good to have a connect but at the same time it's you know even having a connect is not going to guarantee you a pair it definitely comes down to how much money you're you're spending at the store that will allow you to have a shot at these sneakers now Obviously, there there are a lot of consumers who of Dior who um who got these, and obviously they're going to keep them. 
And then you have the pairs that are seated to the celebrities and, you know, the VIPs. Um, and then to the, to the remainder of the people, like you said, there, some, some may keep, but the majority of these people are selling these sneakers. So it gets me thinking like how high, cause everyone's saying right now, 10 to 15 K, but it's like, how high will these legitimately go? I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to watch. Um, they could um, go up to 25. Hold on, I'm going to pull them up on StockX so we can see in real I'm, time here. I'm very intrigued by Dior making a Jordan for $2,000 <clears> when the majority of their sneakers don't even, they go for like a thousand dollars, eight to nine, you know. Oh, that's so a good I, point. I thought that was very, uh, very interesting to me. Um, and, and I feel like the shoe itself is not the, I'm sure the quality is going to be amazing. And I mean, right, bro, it has to be. I mean, you yeah. saw uh, Wertherspoon in that interview, like just gushing mm -hmm. over the quality of it. I mean, yeah, on average right now, it's about 15K, I would say. Hmm. So now we're talking, you know, once again, and, and, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but I think it's either one of those things where you sell immediately when you get, or you're holding for five to seven years. Yeah, because yeah. I I feel like once again after a certain amount of time, like I feel like if you're like all right, I'm gonna cash out in maybe six to a year, I I think people are gonna buy the ones who really want the shoe are gonna buy, and then it's like what's the market on a fifteen thousand dollars sneaker? Like how many people are legitimately dropping fifteen k on a shoe? It's true. Not many. The um. Yeah, I want to see how much this is going to be later. Because I think this is going to be one of those ones where it's like, like you said, maybe like five to seven years later. Like, it ha it probably was going to double. It'd probably be like a $30,000 shoe. If you look at the other shoes within that price range now, mm -hmm. it's only mm -hmm. because they're so old. Mm -hmm. right. Like, these, these are one, this is one of those sneakers that, yeah, like you want to say, you want to sell or rock immediately for the hard flex. And they're going to get fucked up quick if you're trying to flex them now, especially if you're not like a sneaker guy. You know what I mean? Any regular celebrity who wanted a pair of these just to flex isn't going to treat them like how we would treat them. They're, they're going like, to crease them immediately. Beat the shit out of them, dude. So, which, if you think about it like that, then immediately cut the stock list in half of, like, ones that are purchasable five years from now. Right. right. So, like, dead stock pairs, you're looking at maybe four – 4,000 maybe, right? Yeah, or I mean... five years? Of what? 4,000? Oh, how many dead stock pairs there'll be? You know, I think it's weird because I think, I mean, how many people are, genu are genuinely wearing these? I don't even think you cut that in half. Most people are going to, obviously, the majority of people who get them are going to look, look to sell these. And I think even the people who purchase, you know, you have, you have a lot of people who look at it like on some, let me cash out a lot of people and let me pay for them now because they'll want to sell them in years too yeah when, when you get a shoe like this i mean i don't really see because it almost comes down to where are you wearing these two where how many people are really just like you know i think that's why a sneaker like this I, and i know this is going to sound crazy but i think you're going to see the market a lot of fakes uh people will definitely toward tend to gravitate towards because if you if you don't you're not going to spend you know five figures for a sneaker but people will say hey i'll i'll buy a good pair of fakes you know or yeah. i'll buy fakes mm -hmm. of the shoe it's really hard to, it's hard for me to tell and i also feel like uh i know i feel like where are people going to sell these at and that's another thing too because with everything that's going on or everything that's happened with flight club it used to be very simple. It was, you would get the shoe, you would drop it off at Flight Club uh, and call it a day. Now you're, you're putting it in the hands of, you know, Flight Club, you, you may not take them to, you may deal with StockX. It's like, I, I don't know, like how many people are really out there on StockX who want to spend oh, 13K for a pair of shoes. When was the last know. sale? Oh, last so, sale was 15K. When was it though? Oh, I don't know. does it tell you? Does it say that? Yeah, it'll tell you. Uh, 
Hold on, let me pull it back up. Maybe you guys can help me find it. I'm not familiar I, enough. I'm looking at it right now. Hold on. Oh, are you? Okay. Uh, no, go back to the main page, I believe. Just... Scroll down. Let's see. Huh. All right. Not, so not... I'll tell you right now. Hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There you Last go. Uh, Today, yeah, it was 11K. 11,000. Well, I'm look. no, actually, I'm looking at, uh, nope, I'm looking at all sales. And uh, we're talking today at 618, it was a size 11 that went for 11, uh, three. Okay. So, uh, that's what we're, we're looking at right now. And these are all, remember, these are all, you know, pre, these are all like the, the official release is supposed to be sometime this week. I don't think, you know, they have it. But a lot yeah. of pairs have been sold already. So the, the on StockX, at least in this platform, it's saying that they've only sold nine. But that's so, a nine point five. That's like a nine and a half. So yeah. you, you gotta look at all the all sales, baby. Mm -hmm. Wait, where do you get to all sales from here? So go scroll up. Pick the all sales. Yeah, there oh, you go. Oh, I see. I got you. I got you. Okay. Oh, so forty seven sales. Sorry, listeners, about that. My, I'm, that was that was my fault. Um, 47 sales with an average of a $2,000 pair of sneakers with the premium markup of 466%. Quadruple mm -hmm. your money real quick. That's nice. That's wild. So mm -hmm. for you, almost 50 people have spent an average of 11 grand almost. Yeah. That is so much money just in that small amount of sales. You know, what's the craziest part. The people who sold these shoes are going to feel like idiots in a year. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I don't, here's the thing. I don't, you don't know, man, because I mean, a lot of people look at it as, like I said, there's, there's either you get the quick mm -hmm. flip, you know, you get the people who are like, I need them now. I, I need to get my pair or yeah. you're holding for, for years. I mean, you know, we, we see like when something starts out this high, there's not many people that are continuously willing to pay. You need to get the buy the, the buyers who want to, we're willing to spend that right money. it's like it's like when you're trying to sell art you know yeah uh i can i i can't really i don't have any experience with selling high-end sneakers so i'll have to just defer to you lawrence and your expensive ass uh fucking shoes i i honestly and like i said i because you've had you've had some experiences right i've I've, ex I've sold some sneakers for you know four four figures i've never sold anything for five figures but i mean you know, a lot of times it was to me pre COVID, it was simple for me. It was yeah. you, you try to make the most money, you you put them in Flight Club and you let Flight Club do the dirty work. They get their twenty percent and that's it. And I think obviously when you see a store like Flight Club get looted, you know, mm -hmm. we're talking about we're we're literally talking about they have not reopened the New York store yet. The Los Angeles store obviously is closed, the Miami store is closed. And when people loot it, and then there was under a lot of people are under the assumption based on Flight Club's verbiage that, yo, y'all not getting y'all money. I think it caused, and now it's a distrust because it was so simple mm -hmm. back in the days. And I, and I also feel like, like I said, as this pandemic continues to, I don't know, it worse, it continues to get worse. I, I just don't understand, like, because celebrities would be the main people that you would target for a shoe like this. Right. But if celebrities, but you, you see like them like wearing these at like the Met Gala or something. Like, I, I I feel like you you just would see a celebrity wearing these. Like I don't even know if it would be the Met. They would just be wearing these, and it would be so simple when they were getting tour money. Like when they're making appearances and they're getting money, but when their money is kind of slowing down a little bit, and some of these guys aren't the best investors, or they mm -hmm. don't have the, they don't have the best financial sense. It's like how many people are are like I said, are you gonna get? 10k out of honestly like i said you know you, you once again there's people there's rich kids out here that, that parents are still doing but a lot of entertainers i mean and once again a lot of these people have been seated with pairs already it, it felt like i just i saw i forgot who it was he had up kim jones and he was like y'all need a pair and, and it was like all right cool yeah dudes are like celebrities are getting seated so i mean i think it's going to be very interesting to see where where this shoe because I still think it's, I think it's a collector's piece. I think it's a, and I, I've said this, 
I, I think obviously we all look at it like who's wearing the shoe. I think it's the shoe that you you store. I, I, but I don't think I think for two thousand dollar retail, it's the shoe is trash for two k. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is also just one of those ones where it's like in its own category. Like the mags are in their own category. Uh, Red Octobers are in their own category. Uh, it's hard to really, because there's never been a shoe like this, it's hard to put it in some of the uh, categories that we already have built into the system. Um, so, yeah. I th that's what I'm what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's what I was, well, that's what I'm thinking too. I mean, when you look at, when you mention a shoe like a Red October, you look at how limited it was. And this, this shoe, Red Octobers came out six years ago. So they were a four figure shoe. They were, you know, 6K. Now you look at Red October and we're talking six years later after people have got their pairs and that shoe is now double. You know, you're, you're talking, you know, 15, you know, 15 K now, 10, you know, 10, 15 K for that shoe. So it's one of those things where you either sell it now or you're, you're literally holding it. And then when you're holding it, you, the, the amount of people willing to spend, unless you're getting the new money from people, it's not, you know, not everyone's going to buy that shoe. I feel like. I, um, I've never bought a purse before, but the girls who tell me the dif difference between the fakes and like the real shit, not that like regular sneakers are the fake shit, but like that Italian leather, they say that like that shit lasts forever. So I bet that shit wears nice though. Mm. I bet it wears real nice. You talking about the, the I, well the deal? I think the Dior is it's a, like I said it's gonna it's a solid shoe because I'm sure the, the the quality of the leather is amazing, but when you start putting a a clear bottom on the shoe, that oh, also yellow. that's gonna change the it changes the course the life the lifespan or just the, the 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 niceness of the shoe like you know in ten years if it's piss yellow, it's yeah. true. That might be a vibe though. But, I mean, we got to wait and see. We got to see if anyone's still wearing them. Shut up, Luke. Don't laugh at my shit. <laughs> <laughs> we got to see if anyone's still wearing them then. Because, I mean, like, that yellow might hit with the, the pattern in the swoosh. That might kind of match. You, so, you never know. Yeah, it might get brownish. Yeah. But, I mean, I mean, no one we know got this shoe. So, congratulations to anybody anywhere. I know got these shoes. What happened? You know someone who? My, yeah, one of my boys got these shoes. Oh, that from that Facebook group you were mentioning? That was actually your no, boy? no, 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 no. Oh, so we talked about it on the Discord. Chris, Chris's friend. Oh, that's right. My yes. friend from from college. He won a pair, but he's also an influencer. He's got like eighty five thousand followers or some shit. Yeah, man. You know, so it's like, eh, sure, he won, but like you gotta link your Instagram account, you know, mm -hmm. to the raffle. So you know, some fuck shit was happening. I'm sure. Yeah, for sure, man. For fucking sure. Hopefully this, cause I wanted to see a riot at the Dior, the Dior store, but COVID fucking even took that away from me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Did take that away from us. Um, Speaking of fuck shit, did anybody win uh, St. John's this weekend? Negative captain. No. Um, and, and, and I wanted to talk about that too, because I'm, um, I don't know, man. It's, it's, you know, dunks this year have been, uh, it's been very frustrating when you see like four years ago or like where, where dunks were and how easy it was to, to get. Now we're talking instant sellouts. We're talking, I mean, immediately they were three, 3.5 to four times the retail of the shoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's just uh, different. It just yeah. it based on the two the the conversation we've just had. This is just completely different than what we're used to. A two thousand dollars shoe selling for ten thousand, and then a dunk selling for four times as much. Like no one could have even come close no. to predicting this, even last year. Right. Except the people that were already working on the shoes because of the production schedule, or whatever. But it's crazy to think about it like that. And then I mean, yeah, it's just a crazy time to live. It's just everything is befuddling and everywhere you go. Every corner, you're like, how does this even make any sense? Even in sneakers. Well, I think, yeah, like I said, it's a, it's definitely manufactured. And I sent you guys a, a, a CNN article mm -hmm. where uh, Nordstrom, they released the shoes. And, and if you've ever tried to purchase a pair of shoes on Nordstrom, uh, especially a hype release, uh, it's bot-central. It's bot like, it's, you know, you're... 
you're you can get through immediately and it sells out. And Nordstrom yeah. on Thursday or Wednesday or whenever they re- I forgot what day they released the the St. John, but um they uh they oversold. I mean a lot of people got through. And uh, everyone was like, I can't believe I got through. I got through like two minutes later. I got through like three minutes later. I can't believe this. And uh, and then come, you know, everyone had a feeling they were going to be cancellations. And of course, they were cancellations. But uh, I felt I felt very. It was very interesting that CNN picked up the story of yeah. Nordstrom overselling Dunks, and they put it in their business section. Yeah, it's business it's just a weird choice. It's just proving like kind of what you were mentioning before, like how this is, it's just viewed so differently. Um, Something that I've thought about uh, is like, now that this is turning into like the financial section, like people are looking at the money versus the actual sneakers and what the sneakers mean and what they, you know, do for us versus the financial gain. um, I mean, the gap between us actually being sneaker collectors and these people seeing this as a profit margin is mm-hmm. growing so wide that I think, I mean, we've, we've mentioned it before. We even titled an episode calling Streetwear is Getting Gentrified. But now it's at the point where we're not even going to be able to be ourselves a collector because people are going to use their bots to right, go right by past us in line. Um, people are going to use their influence, like what we were just talking about, to get the sneakers before us who don't actually collect sneakers. They just want the flex. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to be sitting here not being able to buy the shoes we want. Mm-hmm. Well, it's already. Ha- I mean, that's already happening. Where you look at, you know, everything is, is 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 tougher than normal. You know, it's yeah. it's all. You know, I will I will say that when when you look at a pair of dunks that are every dunk this year, and, and I'm not even using SBs as a, a, an example for the dunks. I'm talking about every uh, standard uh, dunk from Syracuse, Kentucky, Brazil. You know, champs, uh, plums. Every it, it's been so hard to get the, your hands on and i and i feel like it it's always it's been a manufactured hype mm-hmm. uh based on and we talk about it so much but it's like it's in your face where it's like we put these dunks in the, we see we put the right people around you know that influence people to wear them and and then this is the this is where it's at because we, we still have so where there's the the uh what is it the the Iowa, the Wu Tang joints that are coming out later yeah. this year, the highs. Yeah. We I mean, so it's like it's not like they're re releasing everything that was obtainable years ago and now they're doing it with so much hype that it's gonna be so right. hard. Yeah, and yeah. I just don't know what we even do to like we can't even combat it because we're not like nerdy enough to know how to use bots. Mm-hmm. We're not influential enough to get the shit handed to us. We're not nerdy enough to make bots. But you can buy bots, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, how much is a bot, Luke? Do you know how much bots 5K? are? 5K? No. Yeah, of course. You make your money back almost immediately. Oh, okay. If you, Yeah, I guess so. But two and a half Dior's is a lot of money. Well, because it's like, at first it was, because I was, I was looking into this the other day, not to buy because I can't afford it and I refuse to, buy, to use bots anyway on right. principle. But uh, you, before, when like sneakers were first starting to get like really big in the resale market around like 2010, 2011, and you first started seeing bots, it was like uh, $2,000. And now it's been just steadily climbing where you can still get old old bots for like $2,000, $3,000. They won't work as efficiently as the new ones. The new ones are fucking crazy. Like they're the ones that are clocking up the systems, you know? And they get more sophisticated over time. And then the creators of these bots uh, can uh, keep upcharging, you know? So it's interesting. But also like, you know, we, we have a couple of people that we know, comedians that have that bought bots and they're just flexing their fucking you know, their shoes, and I want to smack them across the face. I hope really? they bomb com- every Wait, show. This, comedi- this comedians that have bots? Yeah. Do oh, you want me to I- name names? I'll fucking do it right now. I want you to, but I don't know if we should. Fuck it. James Camacho and John Kim, John Kim I'm coming for your asses. You both fucking suck. <laughs> yeah, Luke. You guys keep stink. that energy. Wait, they do. 
I didn't even know. I didn't even know these guys. I mean, I'm not even saying it's comics. We're not even gonna get in comedy. I'm just saying you stink as people. You're like, going, <laughs> like bro, they go online. They're on Facebook. They're like, oh, I have this video channel where I fucking I sell the I bought because it's like a great thing to invest in. It's like fuck you. You don't care about this the culture. You fucking you bought DC shoes your entire life. You fucking idiot. You don't care. Yeah, go back and wear Etnies, you little bitch. You little bitch. <laughs> I don't even really know these guys. <laughs> me neither. I don't really know them. I just see them on Facebook and it gets me mad. Wait, who's the other guy? It's the Camacho and who? Uh, John, John Kim? Kim? I think. I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I think we should edit these names, but, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Chris, goddamn, bro. You're what? I'm having a day. This is funny. This is fun. <laughs> I'll ble- I, you know what? I'll bleep them. I'll bleep them. Oh, I see. I see what you're talking about. Uh, Fuck you guys. <laughs> I shouldn't bleep them, but I'll I'll bleep them. What? Yeah, he, They're not gonna listen to this. No, right, I know. Fuck it, I won't bleep them. Who's this gonna? I'm looking. I'm looking at John Kim's Instagram. He got a. He got this. This. The spirit on, and he's like, and it, he's like, anyone can enter the resale game even without fancy bots. Notification literally just popped up on my phone and bought on a hundred and sixty dollar oh, retail for. Four hundred to a thousand dollar resale value, depending on the side. Pay attention, broke ass comics. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, I'm looking at him. Yeah, he definitely. Uh, he seems more in it than Camacho. I don't know. I don't really see Camacho. But Camacho I, posts on the, the oh, buying. Oh, I do know this Facebook. guy. Mm. So Camacho posts on the the reselling page on Facebook mm-hmm. uh, every now and then when he hits. Gotcha. Uh, but he's been bricking. And everybody puts on fucking laughing emojis on his posts. So I think he just disappeared. Also, he only got 15 likes on this Gotham. Exactly. Well, I'm sure. I mean, I mean, listen, it's not about the likes that you get on the Gotham. It's, I, but I understand what Lawrence you're saying. Lawrence, it's everything. That's everything about the Gotham. But I can't be – here's the thing, though. I can't be mad at – I can't be mad at him for uh, – for uh, what do they call it? For taking advantage of something that everyone does. Every, like, bro, everyone is using, like, not everyone, but so many people are using bots now. It's like, it's like, yeah, the, the, the sneaker purse is on some, fuck that, I won't use bots. But, you know, the, 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 the person who, like, this kid or whatever, or just so many people I know, yeah, they're fucking using auto bots, bro. And it's yeah. a battle of the bots. And, fucking roll out. <laughs> and like you said, it's like, who's got the better bot? If yeah. your bot is better, then... Because like you said, there's so many people who have bots at this point. It's almost like, yeah, you can have a, a decent bot and you can get certain things, but there's only certain dudes, I mean, that hit on, you know, Supreme because their bots is lit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So. Okay, here, let me ask you a... Uh, oh, there's fireworks going on in the background. <laughs> I don't know if you can peep them through my shade. It's really let, annoying. Oh, I can't, I can't. That's hilarious. But let me ask you guys a question. Okay, so... Morally, yes, I think we're all on the same page that we're not going to because we can't really afford it, but we're not going to go buy a bot and we're not going to use a bot, right? Right. But I don't, think, I don't think it's about you can't afford a bot. I think it's just more so me. It's more, um, well, at least I, I can say for me, I think it's just something I've never, I've never done. Like I've always been pretty good. And I mean, up until now, but like I've always had like good luck. Yeah. So but let me I, ask you this. Mm hmm. Say someone approaches you and goes, hey, I got a sneaker bot. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'll let you use it. Uh-huh. Do you, in fact, then use it? Honestly, um, is, this, is this a good bot, though? Is he char- like, is it, am I being charged? It's your homie. Uh-huh. He's saying, yo, I just hit on this. Um, I don't, know, I don't know how bots work, really, but he's like, all right, you can use my bot, like, whatever. He's not charging you. He's just letting you use it. You don't got to tell anybody you used it. You can jump cannon it after if you want and post it and talk <laughs> shit. I mean, I Do really you talk- use uh-huh. it? Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I mean, it's one of those things, man. It's like, it's like if, you, if, you stay, if you stay with the dinosaur method of shit, then eventually, like you're gonna get passed by. Does that make you're sense? Get, you're gonna go extinct, baby. And, and so Luke, can... Luke's extinct, pretty much. This, that's what you're telling me. Okay, cool. I I have to stand by this. I I called people out. I gotta stand by my my morals at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm um, principle. I won't do it. Like, cause what I do is I hold on to shit that when I win, I hold on to them. And then when yeah. there's something that comes up that I want, I'll trade my shit for them. You know, the problem is there's no downside to using bots, right? Like they don't. Some people will ban you, right? But I mean, that's why you could you get another well, no, bot there to is, use another store. There's becoming a there's becoming a downside. So, like, with a lot of the, the skateboard stores, we were mentioning this on, on episodes before with, like, the not the Chunkies, but I think another pair of shoes where mm-hmm. you would start to see the, the stores would make fake, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 fake yeah, yeah, yeah. pages for the, for the bots to go attack. And when the bots attack them, uh, it clearly says no refunds. So you're mm-hmm. getting charged. So you'll be charged for those shoes. And sometimes at a clip of, like, six or seven, you know, so you begin, you'll be charged like $700 on shoes and it'd be like, look, it says no refunds. And that's if you're great. stupid enough to buy I love it, that. right. That's what I'm saying. So I think we're, but we're seeing more of that happen where there's, there's, there's going to be combating, at least from local stores, there's going to be co- uh, combating with the, with the bots. Um, so there is a little bit of a downside right now uh, as, as the retail side evolves, maybe we'll see more of a, more of like a strike on them, but who knows? You're right. As of right now, that's like a very minor, you know, a very minor like road bump that you'll run into every now and then is that, oh, I'll lose $500 to $700 on this store, but I'll make I'll make it back on the six other pairs that I won from yeah. six other stores across the country. You know, well, that's what I'm saying. A lot of these stores, you know, a lot of these stores don't have bot, bot protection or they don't even do that because they don't give a fuck. It's like the product is still being sold. Right, mm-hmm. the store is still getting their money. Yeah, um, we can complain all. You know, people. You see people complain all the time. It's not fair. It's not fair. But it's like the product is still. You know, the stores are getting paid, so it's not like it's not like one of those things where it's like, oh man, like we gotta do the right thing. Some stores, yes, yeah, some of these stores do. They try, but a lot of these stores don't have. They don't care enough mm-hmm. to put the proper implementation in place where. You know, you look at a site like you look at Jerry Lorenzo's Fear of God site. Mm-hmm. They announced, and granted, they may only have a few pair like Fear of God sneakers on their website. But I remember a couple of weeks ago, they sold a, a George Floyd Memorial T-shirt with all with you know with all the uh, logo. Yeah, they, uh, instead of the FG, it said GF on the logos on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. When you look at something like that, you wear it's like okay, you may you know you for whatever reason you know obviously you want that shirt. But you have no chance in hell because a people it's because the people have the bots and fear of God is not like well you know let's do something for the people let's figure out a way and they're just like fuck it we're selling out in thirty seconds right you know you 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 have a, a problem I I remember uh, any Shopify site is getting hammered Kip gets hammered bro like all these like stores get hammered. You know, yeah. Nike is like Nike is always when people play like, all right, when they do the when they do the Leo uh, method of selling shit, let everyone in or, mm-hmm. you know, let, let everyone order. It's uh, people, the bots, you know, they, they're putting in hundreds of orders and, you know, and mm-hmm. it's a dirty thing. Yeah, I think it's a good sign of when uh, you, you can trust uh, a person, a place that tries to prevent bots. It's, yeah. an, it's, it's, a, it's an authenticity thing. It's, a, it's and, a character thing more than anything else, you know? Yeah, and if you notice, like you said, skate shops were the first one to do it who originally started this whole shit. Yeah. Well, skate, of... skate shops are, are, are very unique in a sense that they're, sometimes they're very small. You know, they're very small, and they, they kind of, they started out as underground type of, you know, stores, and they're able to kind of, you know, cater and, and, and pull these type of, like, things where, but for the most part, a lot of retail stores, man, fuck that. Cause, real quick, Cause did a great uh, raffle. Um, w- w- they do great things where they, you know, they have you put your card in and, you know, information. And, and it's a quick, maybe five minute raffle. But a lot of these stores, fuck that. Yeah. You're, you're shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's funny because, like, the, the, yeah, they really have to keep it internet present because, like, there was we covered them before. Like the in person drops, it was stories that like made you walk out with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you, if you were gonna sell them, that you have to say they were worn. Like there was measurements being taken, but like now that we're all like stuck inside, 
have to buy online, man. Yeah, like these bots are just gonna fucking just so, winning. Yeah, Shopify. Uh, that's that's hilarious that Kith is a Shopify shop. I don't know why yeah. I think that's funny, but it's very funny. It's goofy. It's real goofy of them. You know, you would expect them to run their own engine, but yeah. It, but also, actually, this kind of goes to because we've spoken about Kith in a couple different ways. And one of them was there in how authentic they are and what they represent. And if they're not helping none of this shit, it just goes to show like a lot of these brands that don't give a shit really don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. Nike doesn't mm-hmm. even like Nike's the biggest culprit of that, and they're the they're at the head of the the entire thing. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, they don't really care. All they care is that their sneakers are selling. That's why you know when CNN picks up that story, like you said, L before before we started, it's like. They don't care. It just shows the investors, look, people are still trying to buy our shit, you know? That's what it is. That's what it comes down to. It's the bottom line with a lot of stores. So when you like when you're like, all right, my moral compass won't allow me to purchase a bot, it's like well, then you're gonna like you're gonna suffer. Like, you know, it's not the old days of of, you know, kind of being able to get into a store or develop that relationship or have a, a plug. Most of the time now everything is that fucking you know, it's how much of Luke, a competitive just, advantage. just try to become the best Ewing collector that's ever existed. Because without a am. bot, I have that's two the... Beers. I already <laughs> am. <laughs> without the have a bot, you're only getting Ewings and that's it. That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> I should just be the Ewings guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just be the Ewings guy. But they're terrible for the summer. That's my only <laughs> issue. Is that they really, like, you know, they look like moon boots. Like, but like during the winter, it's fine. I'm wearing all these layers. It looks fine. But when I'm the summer, when you're wearing shorts, bro, Ewings are not the look, you know? <laughs> well, not the figure look. it out as the best Ewing collector on planet Earth. On planet Earth, the best yes. Ewing collector. It's going to be me, baby. It's only you and Patrick Ewing that have that many Ewings. I want to meet Patrick Ewing so bad. <laughs> he's a nice guy. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's a nice guy. <laughs> Bro, you don't you don't stay in New York that long as as a Nick without being a nice guy. You know what I mean? Like being the yeah. head of the franchise for that long, dealing with New York shit without being a nice guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's a nice guy. Speaking of uh, nice guys, uh, Kanye West is in the news. Um, he is. First of all, wash us in the blood, baby. I'm ready. I'm a born again. I'm here. Are for you? It. I'm here for it, baby. Oh, praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm here for it. I got Jesus. So, Fuck your bots. I got Jesus on my side. Wait, so we have to be like, there, there's so much Kanye news right now. Yeah. Um. All right. So what do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about how he's going to be, how I'm voting for him? Or <laughs> do you want to talk about how uh, well, him and Dr. Dre may never release this album? Well, let's mm-hmm. start out with the, let's start out with the musical side of Kanye first. All right? Sure. Let's we can do that. that. Um, the song is the song. I listened to it once. I don't know if I'll ever listen to it again, but it sounds great. Uh, I mean, cause it's mixed by Dre. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I'm ready for this album. I hope it's like Yeezus gospel. It's what it seems like it's going to be, but That's I don't what know. It seems like, yeah, I don't know. The replay value is going to be great. No one's listening to yay anymore. No, one, only a couple of people listening to kids see ghosts. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, Daytona is the only one out of that whole thing I still listen to with a side of Tiana Taylor. But uh, if Dre's in it, I mean, it's just I, I don't even know what's going to come out though, because Dr. Dre never releases shit. Hmm. His last album that he came out with was for the movie, Com- like for the uh, Compton movie. Well, and then, other than world. that, it was the Chronic in two thousand one. That's it. The last time we saw something like this was, you know, with Pablo, like the huge release schedule where he was yeah. just dropping everything and there was like news and every like that was and, you know, that was a pretty consistent. I, I feel like Ye is way more consistent than Dre. Like, obviously, he's just more more consistent than uh, than Dr. Dre. Mm-hmm. Well, he, well, no, no, no. Here, here's the thing. Ye is way more consistent with being inconsistent. So stuff mm-hmm. will happen. But, but and we all know that. But who knows how or when? Dr. Dre is consistently not releasing music because he like either falls out of love with it or he couldn't get it to where he wanted it. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's, it's a, I, I I don't know. Their conversations have to be crazy. 
Yeah, absolutely. I can't imagine what a conversation between those two guys is like, because you got Yeg pulling one way and then Dre going another. I could see Dr. Dre doing tricep dips the whole time. <laughs> well, well, I think school. Dr. Dr. Dre's got his own issues with the, <laughs> you know, a possible loss of four hundred million dollars to his uh, his wife who filed for divorce. So I think you know, it's, they're definitely itching to be in the studio. But I, that's that's why he's doing that's why he's doing music with Ye now. That's why he's doing music uh, with Kanye. Uh, I mean, okay, I like where this is going. Cause cause what did what did Kanye say? You know, in Gold Digger. Sign, we want prenup, bro. We want prenup. We want Should've signed the years. prenup. And he I was thought like, you were going to say he, he apologized for spilling orange juice on Dr. Dre's carpet. <laughs> no, that never. But yeah, he, yes, he did mention Gold Digger. I mean, that's a good, that's a good mention. Yes. I, um, I'm, I like, like you said, I like the song. Um, uh, you know, I think when him and Travis come together, they do figure out how to piece certain things together. Uh, I've, I've yeah, he fan. had he had Travis preaching to God. Yeah, bro. Mm -hmm. Praise Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So that's what I'm saying. So he was able to. I mean, he was able to get you know Travis. You know that I think when they come together, it's always really uh, it's good. Um, I'm just I don't know, man. I because I, I, I feel like Kanye. What I what I Kanye is always he's whatever whatever he can profit off the most now it just feels like that's what he's running to so it's like he can do the gospel but before that it's like it's he's the make america great again hat wearing guy and it's like you know kind of like who, who side are you like what are you like are you really is this, you're just a you're just a guy who's trying to profit off of whatever you think is hot at the, at the time and i and i i think you know i mean we are i've always been able to separate the the artist from the person you know with kanye but it's like, all right, yeah, song is song is nice, but I I, I just feel that if he could if he can make a make America Great Again album and and not get so much backlash for it, he would. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's why even with what he tweeted out last night on on a, a Saturday, July fourth, with him running for president, it's like, dude, shut the fuck up and just honestly just make your music release your album every time he drops an album he's doing he's saying some some crazy shit to get people riled up yep yes if he if he runs for president i feel like it's it's so selfish and i hope people really see right through it because we're you know especially young people and people who are first-time voters or whatever because you know kanye west is very influential people love some people love his sneakers some people love his fashion but we can't have a guy again with no political experience pulling votes from Biden. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, part of the problem is that, like you said, it's, it's going to pull votes, but the, the precedent of the presidency is so compromised right now that he actually, if you really think about it, is like kind of like not a bad vote, which no, he's, he's gonna be a Chris. He's, Chris, a, Chris he's a terrible. He's a terrible fucking vote. Let's let's be honest. <laughs> as as grown men, and we're all not fucking. I've loved Kanye's for at this point almost twenty years. But he, I'm I'm be, kidding, by the way. I'm kidding. But yeah, we're I, all being I digress. We're both being facetious. All right. Cool. Yeah, I mean yeah. it. It is. So I was having a conversation with my friend yesterday, um, mm -hmm. and he was talking about Kanye presidency, and he was like. We're, Kanye president, we're just talking about presidency in general. He's like, yo, I don't trust anybody with nukes. He was just talking about who, who do you want in front of the nuke button? And uh -huh. I did say, not nukes, but if we're talking about Nikes, I do trust Kanye. And no one really had, like, because that's what it comes to. It's like how stupid, people pick for stupid reasons. And I said that also jokingly, but no one really had an argument well, yeah, against um, it. I mean... How are foreign leaders gonna react to seeing Kanye West as president? You know, I mean, that hopefully, I, everyone's a dickhead in this one. So I, I mean, I just hope it's Biden just to get the swing of things back towards the middle. Yeah, but it's dog is funny. This whole thing it's, is just funny. It's funny. It's funny. I, I think it's uh, I think it's the problem, and I, it's, I, dangerous. it's dangerous. I will say that it's very dangerous. Oh, we're it's, so we're on the edge. I don't know what we're on the edge of, but we're on the edge, and we're teetering. If, 
the fact that he's he's throwing this out there and people are so impressionable that when there's a when you can write in your candidate who you will vote for and they put Kanye West and he's pulling vote like I said he's pulling votes so it's yeah. it, it's it's very irresponsible at this point and I'm not sitting here and and any I'm not I'm not a Biden fan but I, you know at the end of the day I am I am uh, there's no way we can live another four years. <laughs> not with this like, shit. No, not bro. with this shit. I, 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 all right. I want, I'm going to, when I vote, it will be for blue. I don't even want to yeah. say Biden because it's not for him. It's just a blue vote. Mm-hmm. I mean, j- I, dude, I, I said, I mean, I'm just thinking back to when Hillary uh, lost. It's like, but yeah, but Biden's not better than Hillary. Yeah. Now no, we're, we're, getting, we're getting real political right now. I was about to say, political podcast. Who, who would have thought? Who would have thought this streetwear podcast would have a perfect segue into politics? <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck, only Kanye can do that, guys. Only Kanye can do, just appreciate this moment for a second. We may we may never talk about <laughs> politics again on this show. So everybody, just listen, listeners. Oh, okay, enjoy, no, enjoy no. it. No, no, yeah. no. Uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, I, like I said, we're not gonna we're not gonna get too political at all on this podcast. But I, I definitely no. agree that um, it, it's kind of irritable at this point, you know. And, and I feel like that's and 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 for our foreign listeners, because we do have foreign a lot of foreign listeners. Oh, we do have a lot of foreign listeners. We do have a lot of foreign okay. listeners. Um, you know, they're seeing obviously what is I would like to call the mockery years of uh, the the. Uh, presidential uh, office or whatever the president's office because bro like we, we literally had Trump who is literally has no political experience was able no. to win presidency and now it's opened up the floodgates to the point where people are like well Oprah should run or The Rock should run or, or Kanye is tweeting I'm gonna run it's like Okay, guys, you guys have no fucking political experience. Okay, but what if his vice president was Jay Z though? All right, that's a good. <laughs> so, Watch the throne guys. is in the. Pre- <laughs> Watch the throne. <laughs> let's talk about that, guys. Who I Watch mean, the right, Oval Office. Who 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 would he pick to be in his cabinet? <laughs> who's he picking for vice president first? Okay, you think he's all going right, so, Jay? Oh wait, again, before we go before we go into this, all right. So this is a complete. We're not serious. This is a no. joke, but. This is going to be a fun joke. Okay. Um, I like the idea of watching the Oval Office as they wanted to <laughs> watch the throne. Yeah. That's very funny. Watch um, the White so, House, son. Wait, so late, let's, let's pick the positions, though. So we have VP, Chief of, mm-hmm. Chief of Staff, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Secretary of Defense. Oh, yeah, yeah. Secretary mm-hmm. of Defense. Secretary is of Foreign Chief, Affairs. Is Chief of Staff the Secretary of Offense? No. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Chief of Staff is the is the guy who yells at everybody else to do their job. Okay. So that's Mike Dean. Okay. All right. All right. Maybe. 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 Who? Who? Who's better at yelling at other people to do stuff than Virgil Abloh? Okay. Come on, guys. I'm on a roll with this shit. Okay. Secretary of Foreign Affairs. I got I got Amber Rose. No, Mo Steph. No, Amber Rose. She's just gonna give everybody a head and we'll be peaceful for for No, be, no, guys, be, no. What are you? <laughs> all right, no. all right. Maybe I've gone too far. Maybe I've gone too far. I think you went a little too far with that one. Sorry, right. guys. <laughs> I rescind my I rescind my foreign affairs. I, I think I think Talk you got Amber Rose giving everyone head as our. She's the, I, the head of the head office. No. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm, this is, this is, this is gonna lose. A, we're gonna lose a lot of listeners for this stupid shit. But uh, <laughs> no, I think, I think the guys who are gonna be in his cabinet are gonna be like Don C, uh, <laughs> Jasper, Ivan, Jasper, like those type of guys. You know, I, I think you know, Virgil, uh, possibly on some. But I mean, I don't know, man. It's, I'm not even gonna. Lord, no, I think sad no, that this is happening. No. <laughs> Chappelle is in his office. You think Chappelle is in the office? I don't think Chappelle would. I think Chappelle takes, doesn't take the offer. Yeah, I don't think so either, man. I, I think, yeah, I don't think so. Right. When, you look at, when you look at people, like your vice president, and, and 
why are we doing this? But when you look at <laughs> your vice president, it's always a guy who, a person who is, you know, like out of left field. They're usually not someone that, you know, can outshine the, they're not someone that's not going to outshine the president. It's true. You're making a good point. Uh, you know what I'm saying? When you look at, you know, Obama with Biden or Pence with Trump or even, you know, with uh, Sarah Palin and, you know, and, like th- these are people who aren't, who with John McCain, these are people who aren't going to outshine the president. So that's how you have to look at shit. You know what I mean? You look at mm. the Secretary of Defense, like it's, it, it, it's interesting. I don't, you know, I, like I said, I don't want to, I, I kind of, at first I was like, oh, this is fun, but I don't even want to play this game because if he legitimately gets on ballots and pull and really fucks this election up, then, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Um, I, don't I feel know. you, L. Yeah. I feel let's you. Talk, let's talk. What? No, you, what do you got? Let's talk about something more positive with Kanye. Let's try to do okay. that. Okay. Yeah. You, we weren't, do you, that. you weren't here last week, but Chris, uh, I mean, Luke and I, we talked about Kanye's gap deal. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to weigh in on that. Yeah. And you know, I was going to say, you didn't really talk about that. What do you, what do you, what are your thoughts, Chris? Well, first off, as, uh, as a like entrepreneurial, like wannabe, like a guy who's just trying out here, trying to make shit happen for a guy to come out with a song called spaceships and talk about how the gap was accusing him of stealing stuff mm-hmm. to then get a 10 year gap deal after already becoming a billionaire. That is just, I have never seen it come up like that. That shit is bananas. Mm-hmm. How many times there? There's not many people that can work at a place and then also become a major influencer. The stocks of the Gap went up crazy after that deal was announced. Like ten percent. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it was by the people who tried to fire him from working there ten, however long ago. Yeah, thirty years. So years that's ago. crazy. Yeah. Um, the Gap has never done anything smarter in their career. I can't imagine them having a better move in the history of their existence other than this one right now. Um, I don't think the clothes are going to be that great. I think it's going to be just some YZY stuff. It's going to look plain and simple. Like I imagine the GAP YZY, I think it'd be a lot of flips on their core stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it won't uh, stand the test of the 10 year deal that they have. I don't think anyone's going to care after maybe three. But it really depends. I mean, he's managed to take that Adidas deal and really turn that out to not only uh, break the the limit barrier, like he's able to make as much as he wants, and people still buy all of them. So I don't know. But I don't see the gap thing really lasting as long as that 10-year deal. But that is a crazy come up for them and him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what, would, what was like the overall consensus that you guys spoke about last week? Oh, it's it was pretty positive. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. Pretty, <laughs> yes, it's dope. It's pretty cool. We're pretty happy for it. We don't think the resale is going to be too high because he's no, there won't be because he's just going to keep doing that thing where he just keeps releasing shit. You know, be everybody will be able to get some. Well, I think that's the Gap's model. That's all. You know, Gap isn't. They're not a let's release a bunch of limited shit. I mean, we we've seen the Gap have uh, have uh, collaboration deals with other designers. I mean, I always talk about the John Elliott deal. Yeah. And the shit was, you know, it was reasonably priced, you know, for, for Gap merchandise. And, you know, it was it was readily available. Mm-hmm. If, you know, if it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like, oh, my God, this is going to sell out in 30 seconds. I mean, we've, we've seen, we've seen, I've seen H&M do co- um, more limited collabs with designers that have sold out really fast. But, like, the Gap, yeah. I think this will be. No, I think, I think it's just uh, a lot of people are going to be wearing navy hoodies. I think that's really what it's going to come down to. And it's going to say YZY. I don't. Um, he can't really innovate over there, which I, I don't know if that was his end goal was like, cause he did talk about, he wanted to be like a Steve jobs. Like mm-hmm. you think about the amount, the amount of people have, have iPhones that mm-hmm. he yeah. wants people wearing his stuff using the iPhone, you know? So it's, it's, it's really baffling that he was like, yo, I'm gonna be this dude. And he's really becoming that guy. So yeah. you, you really can't take that away from him, which is why he thinks he can run for president by the way. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's hard uh, to say. It's hard to tell him no when he's doing so much, and he also right. watched a guy with no experience do it too. Not to bring that back to that, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, man, it's gonna be a lot of navy hoodies. Um, did you guys see the uh, his little handwritten thing that he did 
outside the store. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you see fun. the part? He added the part where I, he mentioned, he quoted Ricky Bobby, the movie with uh, Talladega Nights. Yeah. I don't know what to do with my hands. Did you guys notice that? I didn't see that. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, at what? the very end of it, he was. It's talking about like, yo, the gap, all my time, whatever. And then at the end, he's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Here, let me pull it up. Hold on, C- cover me. Oh my god. Uh, fucking. Oh yeah, we could talk about NBA real quick. Yeah, of course. Because the NBA said that they're gonna allow pl- uh, players to have their own uh, Black Lives Matter stuff. They're gonna be able to support that stuff. Um. What else did we want to talk about? Well, I, I did want to talk about how 2K uh, currently has Black Lives Matter stuff in their store. And uh, what do we think of, like, the commercialization of the movement, you know? Well, I think, I think especially a game like 2K where um, they're, it's a basketball game. And, and, you know, obviously basketball, you know, it's definitely a sport that's dominated by black people. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and I, and I don't. I mean, I don't mind. Especially they, they did some. They did some tributes online where you couldn't play uh, for a couple hours for you know the George Floyd Memorial. They they've been mm-hmm. they've been very solid on that. I will say that. I think two K as a franchise, there are certain things that are very frustrating when you play that game in terms of the way they try to monetize uh, their you know in terms of you know clothes and you know sneakers and the video game virtual sneakers and things like that. So I don't know. I just, you know, if, if the money is being, I feel like if it's being monetized and the money is being donated to a, a proper place that will, that's designed for, you know, black, uh, you know, for black people to, you know, whether it's, you know, legal funds or, you know, or, or those type of things, I, I'm all for. Mm-hmm. So. Well, wait, hold on. Just to pause this and put a button on the, the Yeezy Gap conversation here. I'll just read it for the um, people who are listening just on audio. Um, so this is literally like a tarp that's put over, um, it's a, it, it's a haunt. I'll just read it. It's a big sign here. It says, hi, Chicago. It's yay. <laughs> this is <clears throat> the gap store. I used to shop at when I would drive my Nissan from the South side. So blessed. I thank God. I am so humbled at the opportunity to serve. I put my heart into every color palette and every detail. I love, uh, Tron, the original, do you like stuff? I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Love, YZY Yeezy. Fuck yeah. You forgot to thank God right at the beginning. Mm. Oh, thank God. Excuse me. Yes. Um, so, and then you could just see also to the left there, there's a tweet that says gap up 12%, which implies a $400 million bump in evaluation thanks to the deal with Kanye. I don't know mm. what to do with my hands. Yeah. Do you- <laughs> okay. Okay. So not only... Let's just just to wrap this up because this is this is crazy. So yeah. he worked at the Gap, mm-hmm. um, got accused of stealing from the Gap. Okay, mm-hmm. so then he lost that job. Yeah, um, becomes Kanye in in everything that it Kanye is. Extends yeah. gets all the way to the point where he gets a deal with the Gap. That's a ten year deal, which is a long time. You think about like even going back to like the Scottie Pippen contract that was seven years, right? And that was long. Right. So think about ten years. So now we're in twenty thirty. Yo. To announce this, he said, I love the original, Tron the original. Right. Do you like stuff? I oh, don't know what shit. to do with my hands. Oh my god, we're gonna get fucking NASCAR mixed with fucking futuristic shit. Uh, I don't know, uh, bro. I mean uh. It's just gonna be crazy. Tw- Ten years, like that. That really made me think about it. Twenty thirty. What's twenty thirty? We're gonna look like. Are we gonna be around in twenty thirty? Is this country gonna be around in twenty thirty? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Knows? Well, I mean, we'll find out this year, pretty much. That's true. That's um, true. What was I gonna say? We were, we were we were on the two K uh, train. Uh, mm-hmm. they, yeah. So they, Kobe, the cover, and or, they got the. BLM stuff in the virtual store, and the NBA is going to let them actually wear some um, predetermined phrases. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna say we got, we do have Kobe on the cover. We also have Zion, mm-hmm. which uh, he's he's on the next generation covers. The you know he's the next gen cover athlete, and Damian Lillard, who uh, 
you know, he's an eight year NBA, eight, nine year guy. And he's fucking amazing. Um, mm-hmm. I was going to say there's, you know, a lot of, there's been a lot of talk about Zion getting the cover after only playing like 19 games so far. Right. And uh, you know how LeBron had to wait basically 10 years before he got an NBA 2K cover and, you know, and, uh, and so many other guys that haven't been on the cover of NBA 2K. Um, I don't know, man. I, I'm very intrigued. I think 2K is, I play that game a lot and it's kind of, you know, it's, this year has been really trash. But, um, yeah, I was, I, I mean, obviously everyone knew Kobe was getting a cover. Yeah. Uh, very, you know, very sad to see. Um, people are already complaining about the way that, you know, you, I feel like you have to buy the, uh, the next gen or the, the, the $99 version to get the, a free upgrade on the six, $60 dollar Like 2K is basically, like you said, they're, they're monetizing this game and, yeah. They better make some upgrades. <clears throat> yeah, well, especially if you're selling BLM stuff and not giving a uh, a black company. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if they're not, if they're doing that, I haven't looked into it where mm-hmm. that where the proceeds are going for that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I I, uh, I agree. I don't like that the deluxe edition is the cover that gets the cope like Kobe because if you remember like 2K13 the cover was Michael Jordan. That was like the Jordan where you could play all the Jordan games. Do you remember that one? Of course. Uh, there was uh, it was 2K, I think, 11 and or 12. 12. Yeah. There was two years he Jordan was on the cover of uh, 2K. Back to back. Been, yeah, it might have been 12 that I'm thinking of. Yeah, 2K, but yeah, 12. Mm-hmm. But like, like, come on, man. You know, I know like Kobe was the cover in 2K10 because that was like my first like real experience playing with 2K uh, was that game. And then, like, it, like people, come on, man. People, this is what people want. People well, want Kobe on the cover, you know. I also, I also feel like, well, the last few years, Two K has been doing like the Legends covers, so like right. Dwayne going on. So I, 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 you know, I listen. I'm not that part. I understand. I mean, you know, it, I think regardless to what they know, that the Kobe cover is going to sell so much. Like it's going to yeah. just like there's not a, uh, you know. I don't know. People like Dame, great Zion, great, but everyone's buying that Kobe cover. Everybody's buying that Kobe cover. It's yeah. legendary, man. It's so cool. I, I mean, they're putting a lot of stock on Zion. It's, it. It's, I mean, it's a little crazy, <clears throat> like you know. But he's marketable. He's, a, you know, he's supposed to be the next big thing. I mean, granted, you know, I mean, I would love to see a guy like John Morant make be on the cover you know, for the mm-hmm. next gen or like Luca, but Luca's going to be on billions of covers, uh, NBA 2K. Jod, too, he's going to get a cover one day. You know, this is the PlayStation 5, Xbox. What is this? What's the name of the doing it on the Xbox? Uh, I don't know. What's it? Uh, X- Scarlet Xbox? What is it? Chris, you know, know that, right? Or no? No, I don't know. The Xbox One Series X, X times 10. Series X. No, what's the <clears throat> Uh, yeah, Series X. Oh, Series X. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you know, and these are you know, so it's the next gen. So I think you know, put his eye on it makes sense. Uh, we shall see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Luca would I mean, have been a better choice, just because he's played more games. Of course. You know. I just I, also I, love the fact. Oh no, go Luke. I just find it weird that like 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 you guys have been saying, he's like he's only played nineteen games. He was seriously injured when he like when he was playing in the NCAA, like you know, how, what can he do now? Like we don't know anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, There's mm-hmm. like you you're putting a lot of stock in this in this player that like I all respect to him. Get paid, brother. You know, mm-hmm. get paid while you still can. You know, but it's it's mm-hmm. like it's a little just it's just a weird choice. You know. Yep. No, but I am happy that um, the NBA is, like, giving the okay to the players to wear some of this stuff uh, during the games and on the jersey and all that other shit. So, like, they don't have to – there's not going to be some, like, NFL-type bullshit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even the NFL, um, they're going to play, like, the Black National Anthem during the Mm -hmm. beginning of those games, which is cool. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're going to – I'm – in the middle of the season, I feel like the NFL is going to start pulling some bullshit again. Yeah, for sure. I think you're gonna start off with it nice, and then kind of let it fade off, and then pull some bullshit. But NBA, 
always on the always been on the right side of the shit for sure. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I, you know, and that's if we get an NFL season. That's if we get an NBA season. I mean, all this shit is, you know, every day it's something different. So it's up in the air, baby. Who knows? <clears throat> Yeah, man. Who knows? Um, how about we put a zip tie on this with Pop Smoke? Sure. Yeah. So, of course, uh, Pop Smoke's uh, Rest in Peace uh, album drops Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, I have not seen as this much support for an artist in a long time, by the way. Living or dead, circumstance, whatever it is. Every, dude, I, I, I can't go outside without hearing this album, and it's great. Bro, yeah. It, I mean, mm-hmm. everybody <clears throat> fucks with Pop Smoke. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone's, you know, it's it's one of those tragic uh, losses, and, and, you know, where you could see that someone was really talented and 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 was had a different sound, and people fucked with it a lot, and and to be tragically killed like that at, what, 20? Oh, I forgot. It was, it's, it's even, crazy. Yeah, yeah. so... I went. I listened to it a couple times through. I I wouldn't say drill is necessarily like my go-to genre of rap, but Mm -hmm. I do love when uh, that energy is on a track. So, yeah, Uh he like himself is so good at making me want to commit violent acts that it outdoes like my uh, like I'm not into drill, but I'm into that shit. So that's dude. Yeah. Put that kind of energy on any sort of track, and I'm fucking all about it. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Well, we should go over the cover, because the cover is probably the funniest thing about this. Yeah. I feel like you want you want to go into it. I know. I, I say I'm with you. Yeah, go ahead. I, yo, okay. So, I don't know if anyone's everyone's aware of how many album covers that Virgil's actually worked on. But he's worked on su- a lot. You surprised me when you brought that up. Like, I didn't realize how many covers he's worked on. Mm-hmm. He's worked on a lot. He he worked on um, Uzi Verts that had, uh, I think it was 2013. It was like the first time I really saw Off-White. Yeah. Um, generally speaking, I knew of Off-White, but I didn't know it like that. He had the Off-White tape. So, I mean, he was doing the, the quotation thing a while ago, so it's hard to kind of take that away from him. Um, mm-hmm. But he did uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Yeah. And I got to, oh, wait, I'll put it asterisk on He didn't do these. He worked on them. Uh-huh. He gets like an EP credit. Uh-huh. Um, so what happens when you're uh, like from a, you're a major, these types of projects that have a lot of money and a lot of influence into them, a lot of people get to work on one thing. So right. a lot of these covers that he's involved in, there's like six other people that worked on them, right? So he get, basically it's like an EP credit on this. Um, Watch the Throne. Um, there's, there's a bunch of them. But this is the only one that he himself sort of said that he did. Uh-huh. And it's by far one of the worst album covers I've ever seen in my entire life. He basically mm-hmm. took, if you Google Pop Smoke, okay, it's the image that he uses, the first image. He didn't look for another image. He didn't try to find He didn't get something from the fucking camp. You just Google Pop Smoke, grab that image. And it looks like he took What a Time to Be Alive, put that shit on top of it, and then added some weird barbed wire at an angle. Bro, mm-hmm. this shit is the most garbage fucking album cover I saw. I mean, the one that actually came out, that just the black rose. I mean, the uh, the black uh, background with the uh, chrome rose. That's cool. I'm down with that. But the shit Virgil yeah. did is garbage, which kind of backs me up on the fact that he really can't do shit himself. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, at first I was like, I was kind of skeptical of what you were saying. And then I looked at every, like, once you had mentioned that he had done other covers and I started looking at the other covers, I'm like, this is just too much of a stark difference from everything else that he's done so far. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, it's, I mean, look, okay, so, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of the other ones he did. Um, this, but, I mean, this he gets credited with a lot of good stuff. Oh, uh, Long Live ASAP, ASAP's first album he uh, touched. Um, he, he's done a lot of Kanye with Yeezus. Uh Fuck, where are the other ones? I, he did Pray for Paris with West Side, West Side Guns album. Oh, yeah, yes. Which That one's I, gorgeous. I hope they back away from it because Griselda as a whole loves Virgil, but I think they only like him because of his current popularity. I think they got to separate from him because mm-hmm. mm. 
they already got enough saying he, they wanted to write brick on their brick. Like, bro, Virgil's been fucking up lately. Like, get away from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, Virgil's definitely, uh, he's definitely, um, between this and, the, you know, the money donating and, like, in the whole thing with Witherspoon, uh, he's been having an interesting 2020. And I think, you know, that whole uh, honeymoon phase where people just, anything he did was perfect. I think it's that's that it's definitely coming to an end with him. I think, uh, yeah, he doesn't have the, like his thing. A lot of things are being scrutinized that he does a lot heavier than previous. You know, he was able to just put quotations around shit and people were like, "Yo, this guy is fucking great." Right. But um, he's starting to slightly get exposed. I mean, so we all know the tweet from like 2012 where he says, "Designs the freshest scam," uh-huh. and I know what he means by that. Or at least I, I think I know what he means by that. So as an artist and as a person who tries to like me, myself, be my own, and I'm trying to be my own boss. I suck at it, but I'm getting there. You know what I mean? Like I try to do uh, shit myself. Right. Um, you learn the tricks of like just getting shit done. And I feel like that's what Virgil's been doing his whole career. I don't know if his execution's that great. I'm, I can't take away his eye. I think his eye is good. But when you look at stuff like the Pop Smoke cover, you're like, how did you even, you, that's all you could do with your hands. You got to be standing over someone's shoulder who knows how to use the shit mm-hmm. in order for it to really get done. Mm-hmm. Luke, did, did you actually Google Pop Smoke and see the photos that came up? I did. <laughs> Isn't it literally the first photo that's right there? Uh, it is not. But no, fuck you. It's yes, up it there. Let me see. Hold on. Oh, shit. No, it is the first one. You're right. That's what I'm saying, bro. He probably... That dude's so fucking busy. He yeah. probably was like, shit, I just got to get this done. He says he had a conversation with him about it. So it was like, uh-huh. pop smoke, grab it, bong. What did he say? All right, concrete, Brooklyn, whatever. And then I'm not saying he grabbed the um, What a Time to Be Alive cover, but he definitely like looked at that and was like, okay, I'll use something like this. Uh-huh. And then barbed wire, and I don't know. Smoke, because he's, he's pop smoke, so I get put yeah, smoke but in I mean, the background. Like, I guarantee every artist that knows what they're talking about looked at that and was like, bro, this guy sucks. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was so much backlash from it. You know, yeah. it was like, don't listen, don't disrespect <clears throat> this kid's uh, album, you know. And um, yeah, a lot of, yeah. So you're, you're more passionate about this than either of us. And that's just because you have a graphic design background. <laughs> yeah. And you just, you really wanted to touch this <clears throat> album. Well, you know what it is, man? It's like, I, I, and people have DM me saying like, yo, your Virgil hate is crazy, which I don't think I've been that hateful towards him specifically. I just don't like, uh, the Virgil train, I think is a metaphor for um, people who have no taste and don't know what they're talking about, just trying to be a part of something. I mean, we've mm-hmm. spoken about it on many different levels. Like Supreme is one version of this, um, where it's like, you get a Supreme hat, now you think you're a hype beast and it's cool. It, being a hype beast is not cool, dude. It's the worst. It's a, it's a Wear sickness. your Supreme hat and wear it proudly because you like Supreme and what it represents, but don't do it just because you think that it's cool to do. Right. And that's sort of what Virgil is like. So I, I'm sure he's a nice guy. I'm, I'm, I'm not denying his eye because the, the stuff he's been a part of, it's hard to argue. But just him at a computer, I, I'm looking at this cover and I'm like, bro, I mean, yeah, 2020 is not your year, Virgil. Yeah, he's having a rough year. He's having a rough one. Um, but unless you guys got something else, um, we can put a you know, put a button on this. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Um, we didn't talk about the space hippies or the um, ISPA Nikes, but we'll get to that next week. Yeah, we can talk about that next week. Uh, I missed on all of those space hippies. Oh, you really yeah. wanted them too. I did. I did want them. Yeah, but Nike's doing um, on the product innovation side what I wanted to say about these, if, if you guys haven't seen them, look, just Google ISPA Nike, or, you know, you probably know the space hippie Nikes, but on the product development side, I think they're doing a really good job of kind of uh, innovating some stuff they already had in front of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think they're, I think they're trying to make a jump towards the future and it's, it's kind of interesting. I mean, like, cause one of those space hippies has that, uh, the Jordan 33 pole lace system, which is the only right. reason why I bought those shoes. So it's nice to see, them kind of using that around. Chris, right. you, you, you're hilarious. You just said we're going to get to that next week, and then you're like, you know what, fuck it. We're going to get to it right now. <laughs> no, so we're, done. Right. no we're, done. we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. 
So. No, I mean, I, 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 you guys are you guys are vibing, so I just was like, fuck it. You, you then tell All me. right, fuck it. We'll, we'll keep it going. <laughs> No, now I want to end it. Now they called me out. Nah, no, I'm just, I'm no, no, no. Those, Lawrence, what are your hilarious. thoughts? Move it to Lawrence. What are your thoughts, sir? Uh, just, just more hype, and uh, <laughs> you know, more when, when you know, to me, when, when you're selling sneakers now, and, and not many stores are open, or, or um, it's everything. A lot of people feel more comfortable online. You get any sellouts even faster now, and and space if you fell under that, and. Once again, people saw the resale on certain on certain models, the, the space would be three and recipe for disaster. Yeah. Recipe for disaster. Okay. But All right. we can just keep it there. We don't gotta go too crazy. Cool. Um, so you guys know the deal. Follow us at not that cheney, at Trevisus, at L Z D three two five. Um Yeah, you fucking you already know. Join the Discord. Buy Becky's merch, our merch from Becky. And join mm-hmm. the Discord. That's really it. Awesome. That's it. Um, yeah. So unless that's it, guys, then I'll just uh, we'll talk next week. I mean, I'll see. You, I'll talk to you guys in between. But we'll t- we'll we'll do this again in a week, huh? Always. All right. Same don't. time, baby. Yeah. This was a horrible dismount. It feels like we're we, back. To we when really we, first started we the really podcast. fucked it up. We really <laughs> picked up at the end here. All right, guys. This is it. Goodbye. See you later.